Well, hey, everybody. I'm Jonathan, and I've got a special guest with me today. Come on. How you doing? And special in what way, exactly? I want to know that special. Let's define special. Okay, well, let's just keep going now. <laughs> <laughs> now, Pastor Dale, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. good. Thanks Thank for having me on this show. You're uh, Y'all done a great job. My small mm. group has been talking, said, said we should use our pastors every single time. That's what oh, they wow. said. You guys have done an incredible I'm kind of intimidated to be here after all these great lineup you've had. Well, I will tell you, the first week, uh, Pastor Shane did say it was going to plateau after here. And that was seven weeks ago. Okay. So I don't know where it's going to go from here. All right, I got you. <laughs> I was uh, intimidated. <laughs> well, we're going to have fun today, and, and I'm glad you're here. we got some stuff why I wanted you to come specifically to this week, um, because we're talking about some things that happened the last week of Jesus' life um, that are big deals at Life Springs Church. So right. we'll go through that, and that's why I wanted you here to be able to speak into that yes, sir. for those tuning in. So. Um, if you've been with us, you know we've been walking through the book of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew, and uh, we're in the last week of the semester. And so we're going to go ahead and get right into it. The first chapter, chapter 26, is when we learn that Jesus is going to be crucified. And, you know, the disciples, they've been walking with Jesus, but these Pharisees have been coming against him all his life, all his preaching time and, and everything. Why do you think they were so against Jesus? Well, he he was a threat to their whole system. They kind of had it worked out, and that's the way we are. In things familiar is where we find security. Mm. And we have our religion like we want it. We got our routine like we want it. We got whatever. And so when he came and he challenges that, it becomes a problem to the religious leaders. I right. think everyone has a resistance to Jesus for different reasons. But I think some people are very much like that. When If we were to submit our lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, He is now in charge. He mm. now calls the shots. And that messes up our man-made religions Ooh. and our man-made systems. That's good. I think you're right, obviously, because as Jesus is winding down His time on earth, He says, listen to His disciples, He says, listen, this is in the first part of 26. I'm about to die. I'm about to be handed over. And so right after that, he gets anointed. If you, you know those headings in your Bible, it usually will say Jesus is anointed in Bethany. And he goes into the house of, of a person who had leprosy and he heals the man. And then all of a sudden this woman shows up who does a thing. You know what I'm talking about, right? I think he actually preached on this a few months ago, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it was Pastor Daniel. You all uh, look the same. Yeah, I get me confused. and Daniel get confused a lot. <laughs> The same. Yeah, I, I preached on it. I mean, this is a, a, in fact, I was telling you, these are longer passages. You probably already know that study in these. And I said, I don't think I could do a short video. Like I preached on every bit of this. It's like 45 minutes at a time. Right. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I did preach on it to your yeah. point. What's the, what was the big deal? This woman comes in to anoint Jesus and everyone in the room is like, what is she doing? Doesn't she know who he is? Right. Doesn't she know who she is? But there's this bigger deal that happens. Well, what's going on there? Well, see, you know, Jesus gets anointed several times. And so it's kind of hard to uh, keep all of those anointings straight by some of the ones that do this. Yeah. But, but he says here the big deal for that. And he had been saying the whole time, I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to be crucified. And I'm going to die. It's a preparal, uh, pre preparation for his burial and mm -hmm. resurrection. Yeah. So and all of it's a setup. It's all a setup. It's yeah. a foreshadowing. Mm, yes. So much of what he did was a foreshadowing. Well, Jesus, he, he gets anointed, and at the same time, Judas is working in the background mm -hmm. with uh, the, the leaders, the chief priests and all, and he's taking a bribe to betray Jesus. You remember all that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 30 pieces of silver is, is what right. they wind up doing, and I, how much would that be roughly, do you think, today? Well, I, I don't know exactly, but I did see the other, somebody sent an email to me, like from one of the churches on Easter, wanting to said said it was the equivalent of an Apple Watch, okay. three hundred and some dollars. And the question was, is Jesus more valuable to you than an Apple Watch? Wow. Some of our Apple haters really are like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Well, well, he gets betrayed, or he's going to be betrayed. But then Jesus shares the Last Supper, is what the heading is, right? That's right. that's the last meal he's going to share with his disciples. And they're celebrating a Jewish custom of Passover. But Jesus does something different. He overlays, if you will, their tradition of the Passover with something new that he's doing. Mm -hmm. And we celebrate that here at church all the time, communion. What, what is the big deal for us here in 2024 about why we should do communion when Jesus did all those years ago? 
Right. I, communion, I think, um, there's, there's, two dis, there's, there's two ordinances of the church or practices in worship that I think probably don't get enough highlighting of the spiritual significance of them, honestly, at least in our church. One of them is communion and one of them is baptism. Mm. Those two were very, very important to Jesus. And uh, communion is, is the celebration of the new covenant. It's yeah. the, the Passover would celebrate the old covenant and he was changing it. And he's saying the Passover lamb has, is going to be slain for us and his blood would be spilled for us and it would cover all of our sins once and for all. Ah, come on. It's so important to me that I don't think that we give enough. He says, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. And he doesn't say, I was always nervous that we would do it so much that it was lose significance. Mm. But I think the opposite may be true. We've not done it enough and not understood its significance. And wow. so um, as a, because here's what, where order is restored, blessings mm. are released. Oh, yes, and sir. what happens first matters. And so God laid it on my heart a couple of years ago to start doing this the first of the month to remind our congregation we were forgiven. We're under the yes. new covenant, the blood of the lamb, and we're his body. You've been bought with a price. You're mm. not your own. He paid your ransom. And now we are the hands and feet of Jesus mm. at work, at school, everywhere we go. And it's just a reminder to our congregation of what who we are. This is who you are yeah. because you've been bought with the blood of Jesus. Oh, that's so good. I don't think the disciples that night fully got all that. No. <laughs> no. But that's incredible. Well, Jesus is going to go get ready to be betrayed, right? He even says it that night in the meal. I'm about to be betrayed and Judas is there and all the disciples say, hey, is it me, is it me? And Judas says, is it me? Jesus like, yeah, you just said it right. So, <laughs> all right. so then he, he, they leave and Jesus is getting ready to pray. He knows what's coming. So he takes his disciples with him and Peter is there and, and Peter's like, hey, I, I wouldn't do that, would I? And Jesus says, no, 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 you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows, right? And sure enough, that's what ends up happening. Right. He gets betrayed. Judas brings these guys. They arrest Jesus. Jesus is mocked. He's beaten. He's whatever. And then Peter is there. This is in chapter 27. Peter is there and he denies Jesus three times. Here's my question for you. Judas denied Jesus in the garden and was betrayed and, and arrested. Peter denied Jesus in the temple courts. What's the difference? Well, you know, and the truth is, Dale's denied Jesus too. Mm. Now, I don't did I didn't do it with a servant girl asking me over a fire while Jesus has been beaten and the rooster didn't crow, and I didn't get an Apple Watch or thirty pieces of silver. But there has been more than one occasion in my life when I knew, I knew what Jesus wanted, and I chose to turn and walk away and do something different. Yeah, um, I I think that all have. I mean, the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Um, None of us are righteous, no, not one, the Bible says. So we've all had our share and doses. It's easy to look down at people who deny, but we've all been down that road. Yeah. I think the question is, what do you do afterwards? Mm, yeah. The truth of the matter is, Jesus had enough grace to forgive Judas as much as he did Peter. In fact, Jesus knew that Judas would betray him and chose him anyway to be a disciple. Oh, yeah. I think that the thing that we would want to get here at Life Springs and all of us that are watching this maybe is when you fail, I try to teach this to my kids, you're going to fail. Mm. What do you do next is what matters. What do you do after you fail? Yeah, I love that. I hope you caught that. That is strong. That is powerful. Two more questions I got for you. One more in chapter 27, and then we'll go to 28. So in chapter 27, Right there at the end, Jesus is now on his way to be crucified, okay? He gets to the spot called Golgotha, which means the skull, mm -hmm. and he's, he's put upon the cross, a thief on each side. There's all these things that have led up to it. Matthew doesn't give all the details like some of the right. other Gospels. But Jesus is on that cross, and he says those words in another language, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why do you think he said that? What, what was he, I mean, he's saying, God, you've forsaken me, but we wouldn't think that that's what happened naturally. There's got to be something bigger happening. Mm -hmm. What went on there? Well, one of the things I love about the whole, there's a lot of things I love about the story, but one of the things I love about the whole thing, the discourse, is they're really showing, they mean in Matthew, uh, 
but to other gospel writers as well, the humanity of Jesus, that he literally took on the cloth. I mean, he, he relinquished his authority, mm. and that's why he sat there with Pilate, and he took the abuse, and he took the beating, and he took the whole thing, because he really did put down his deity and pick up the humanity. And you see that in the garden when he prays and he saw, he's saying, Father, let this bitter cup pass from me, this bitter cup of suffering pass from me, from me, but nevertheless not my will but thy will. And it, mm -hmm. it reminds me of Mary of saying, I, you know, I am the Lord's servant, let whatever you say happen to me. It reminds yeah. me of the Lord's prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's, it's just that whole thing. And I think in that moment, in that loneliness, in that time, I think that when he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's showing us his humanity. This mm. was not, even though he knew he was born to die, even though he knew he was God, he had all the feels, okay? Yeah. He had all the pain. It, it cut him. It hurt him. It just, it exact, everything that you've ever experienced, he experienced. Every tempt, you, you know, I believe Jesus had everything that you have. He had loneliness thoughts. He had, you know, all the, he was, he was tempted as we're tempted. He didn't mm -hmm. sin. That's the difference between him and us. Yeah. But he was tempted as we're tempted. He went through puberty like you went through puberty. I mean, he just, the same thing. So I think he had that whole thing. But I think spiritually as well, there's this God, the Bible says that Jesus became sin. Yes. But yet God can't look at sin. Mm. So there's that whole dynamic as well that he's the embodiment of every sin that I've ever committed and you've ever committed and you've ever committed. Yeah. And God can't look at that at all, but he's paying the price for our sin so that now our Heavenly Father, the same one who couldn't look on Jesus can look on us Come on. because we're wrapped. I'm about to preach. Woo. He was wrapped in the blood of the Lamb yes, and we're wrapped in the righteousness of Jesus because of what he did for us on Calvary. Mm, amen. So thank God Absolutely. <laughs> that that moment happened. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Chapter 28 ends with what we all call the Great Commission. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that's been a life verse for you. 100%, yeah. And I thought we would end this, this series, end this study, this video even today, with you taking time to just share a little bit, whatever you want to, about what the Great Commission means for us as Life Springs Church, and what is Jesus right. saying to us as his disciples to go and make disciples? Yeah, that's a loaded question, and I know <laughs> this is time restrained, so I know... Uh, well, you've preached sermons and even series on, on that these passage, verses. right, yeah, yeah, so it's hard. You know, I will say it's the Great Commission. It's, it's not the Great Suggestion. It says that they, they worship, but, but they some doubt it, some doubt and it. I love yeah. that because... I find myself in that place so many mm. times where God, it's like the guy in the Bible that said, God, I believe, but help now my unbelief, right? And so I worship, but I'm, if you ever feel a little schizophrenic in your worship, join the club, all right? You got worship, but you got doubt that's married right there in the same body. So what did Jesus do on top of them worrying, anxious, but yet worshiping, God, I believe, but I'm scared. Are they going to do to me what they did to you? Are they going to beat me? Are they mm. going to nail me to a cross, what's going to happen? I'm, I, I believe in you, but I'm scared. You know, I'm, I'm, I want my future. Well, then he puts right on top of that when, whenever, I think this is a great leadership lesson, when people are scared and doubting, give them a vision worth dying for. Oh. He said, I, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. You don't have anything to worry about. I've got all this. Yeah. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, because I have authority, go and make disciples, mm -hmm. not go gather decisions, not go get a bunch of people to raise their hand at the end of a sermon. Not go get a bunch of people to walk an aisle. Go and make disciples of Jesus Christ, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded, mm. not to pull out the parts of the Bible we like, oh, come on. but everything they have commanded, and do it in, in, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and other most ends of the earth, which is where the, where the power, uh, he's going to give us power in Acts 1-8, which is going to be in that same way. In other words, you just begin to start making disciples and let my gospel spread. So if people say, I just don't know what my purpose is, I already know your purpose. Mm. Make disciples come of all on. nations, yeah. baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything he's commanded. Everything we do, every singer, every youth leader, every connect person, Every small group leader, Come on. every kids worker, everything, we, every dream center, everything we do is to make disciples. Come and on. if it's not making disciples, we need to quit doing it. Wow. Bottom line, it wow. becomes the acid test 
of everything we do as a ministry, and it really should be the acid test of everything. It's not compartmentalized, guys. Mm -hmm. You make disciples as you work, as you raise your children, as you go hunting with the hunting buddies. This is what we do. Oh, there is good. no other goal. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything Jesus commanded. That's so good. Wow. That's a good challenge for us because I don't think we always think that way. No. So I, I want to give our group members a challenge. And the timing of this recording is, I love when God does this. The timing is so perfect because we're about to have our, what we're calling Lifesaver Weekend. It's the end of school bash coming up June 6th mm -hmm. and June 9th. So for some of you, you're watching this the week right before that. Awesome. The greatest thing you can do is bring someone with you, and that is the process that begins making a disciple. Yep. Now here's what I want you to do, small group. I want you to take some time, take five, ten minutes, whatever, and as a group, I want you to write down some names of people who are your lifesaver that you're going to invest and invite That's good. Yep. to the Lifesaver Weekend because we are challenged, not just by Pastor Dale, our leader, yep. but by Jesus Christ, Absolutely. our King. Way more make, authority. Yeah. <laughs> uh, make sure you do this. Take this serious because you will literally change someone's life for eternity. Absolutely. Yeah. Good word, man. We love you guys. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for being with us today, PD. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, thank you all for what you're doing. It's incredible to have people who gather in a living room with a Bible open because they want to be a disciple. Mm. It says a lot about you. Thank you for what you're doing. We love you guys. We'll see you soon.